Wow, everybody. <laughs> Holy technical update and upgrade for all of us. This took 25 minutes to get us yeah. actually online. Welcome, everyone. It is Quantum Healing with Candace. It is the 15th of August. 2018 and I'm here with Allison Co. and we just spent all kinds of time trying to get to you all to yeah. be able to talk. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> but you you did all the work. I just sat here and gazed out my window. <laughs> <laughs> you just sat there and looked gorgeous as you do. You are glowing, girl. The summer no. must agree with you. It, it definitely agrees with my personality, I'll tell you that. But uh, also, we have this awesome filter thing on uh, on Zoom, the HD filter. I don't look like this in real life. You can see my pores in real life. Don't <laughs> don't believe everything you see. <laughs> I don't know. I, I still every once in a while, I think I must be missing that button on on zoom filter but uh i'll go look for it in the future welcome yeah. welcome welcome so happy to catch up with you it's been a while hasn't it it has been a while what like three well we did the it was four months ago that we did the um the worldwide regression isn't that correct and a I, april actually yeah. wow that's Ooh, exactly four. right april yeah May, july august that's four months exactly it is the middle yeah. of middle of August, so it's the middle, um, yeah, exactly four months. Well, so nice to catch up with you. You too, I'm excited about this. And yeah, and I know you guys are going through a lot over there. You know, babies coming or not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And you know, though, um, we're not alone. Everybody's going through stuff. It, it's like the great purge is happening, and that gives me goosebumps almost. Um, I bet you're finding that in, in some of your sessions. You know, I haven't done a whole lot of sessions uh, since the 1st of July. A couple I might be able to talk about a little bit, but there is really something going on with 3D and purging. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Have you seen that in your sessions? Oh yeah, for sure. Whether it's purging uh, habits, whether it's purging beliefs, whether it's purging, you know, um, diets that no longer work for you. It, it's it, it truly is amazing what's going on right now. We are being kind of remolded, you know, if you will, taken apart and then remolded into who we really need to be at this time in our lives and at this time in, in the universe, you know, this specific time. Yeah. And so it, it, it's a painful process, though. So it is not pretty when you're kind of taken apart, just like a, you know, I always, I always use this analogy. That's my baby. Um, she's purging. She's purging. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> I got to go. She is. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that caterpillar that goes into the cocoon, they, they don't just add parts. They dissolve. And then they reform into that butterfly. And that's what's going on here now. And, and you know, to, to be allowing is the only way to do it the right way. Because if you're, if you're kicking and screaming and fighting, oh, Lord, you are, <laughs> you're not going to win that battle. You're not going to win. You might as well just go with the flow. Go with you the know, flow. You know what I've noticed? A lot of people are complaining about uh, digestive issues. I know that, I, I mean, I've got things in the other room keep me on juicing. My body is happiest with juices right now, but there's that part of me that just doesn't like that. <laughs> you know, I'd like to have some of my comfort foods, but you know, one of the things I've noticed a lot of energy workers or people who do healing right now are talking about, I keep seeing, literally seeing the word vomiting, like a lot, like, you know, yeah. people really needing to do that kind of immediate purge. And, yeah. uh, you know, not just here or there, but you know, repeatedly I've heard about this. So there really is something going on and we are, we are really doing something to our 3D bodies, I think, uh, as an upgrade, just kind of like the computer insisted on going through its upgrades and updates yeah. before this session, before this um, show today. Yeah, yeah. Once you allowed, you rebooted the computer, right? <laughs> but yeah, the vomiting is, is interesting. I, that's the, about the third time this week that I've heard you know, people getting sick, 
people vomiting and then and and vomiting of course is an immediate response of uh from your body to get something out of you that the body does not want and so please pay attention pay attention to what the body doesn't want the mind might want it the mind might say but i can i always have I've, <laughs> this is what i do this is who i am but the body is like no not anymore that's not what we do anymore. I'm not built for that anymore. I'm beyond that. And you need to catch up. The mind needs to catch up. And usually that that's what's going on is the mind hasn't caught up with where the body's being taken and where the energy is being taken. And, and so, yeah, it, it is a little bit of a game of a catch up. And that, like I said, that can be with beliefs, that can be with habits, that can be with, with, with relationships, that can be with food, you know, it's everywhere. Yep. Yep. Ah, staying with the flow, even if the flow is yeah. this way a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes you, um, the impetus is, it really puts the impetus on being present, being present with the way your body is giving you messages, you know, and, and, and that's, that's a sure sign that you're not being present is when, when you're just going on a habitual pattern, you're not, you're not being present to what you're being asked to do right now. And I, and I, I know this from experience, right? And I know it from, from, from my clients and I know it from myself. And so, so I'll never talk about it if I haven't done, <laughs> if it hasn't affected me, you know, this is, this is definitely going on in a lot of places. Yeah. Do you find also some of it has to do with an empathetic response or just an energetic response with what's going on out there in our communities or in our world? I know there's that's something else a lot of healers are talking about, too, is sometimes stuff you may be purging or reacting to some stuff that isn't exactly you. It's just who maybe you're yeah. connected to, maybe it's your ancestral line, maybe it's your community. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think I think that's a that's a that's a great question because there are the, there are different reasons why you're why why you're purging and why you're actually ingesting and for the em, for the empath it it almost is from this form of wanting to help wanting to serve because you feel the feelings of what's going on out there in the world and you feel like you shouldn't just hide yourself from it you should help absorb it and help process it and uh that that's not always the best use of your skill and ability you know sometimes you do have to kind of filter this stuff beforehand you have to fill you have to protect yourself from getting these huge energetic hits you have to focus on the good rather than the bad sometimes and so yeah sometimes sometimes it is an empathic ability you know wanting to help lighten the load of everybody else yeah luckily i'm not hugely empathic so <laughs> Mine isn't that, but I always feel for people who, who are, you know, it's like, oh gosh, I can't imagine feel like feeling more than I already do about the world and, and being hit by the sadness and the pain that's ever present. I can't imagine anything more than what I already, like already am sensitive to. Ooh, you guys, you really picked a, picked a hard one. <laughs> Just being here. Have, have your clients been experiencing some of that too? What have been some, some of your sessions been like lately? You know, uh, ETs, ETs, ETs. I swear to God, we have been uh, getting visited through these sessions by so many ETs. So many ETs coming in and saying, we need this person to actually pay attention to us because we are this person in a higher dimension or we, we are this person's family and we're trying to give them this message, this message, this message, and we need them to anchor that information down into this earth. That has been the trend this summer. And that's actually, um, st I started getting those sessions back in the spring and, uh, and winter and then just um, a floodgate of them during the summer. And by the way, this summer has been insane just because of the, the, the sessions I've been getting, the beautiful people all over the world. I've been doing your, your guys' technique, the Beyond Quantum Healing, um, which opens me up to do remote sessions and they, I, I love it. 
I absolutely love connecting with people all over the world. Um, so that's great. But yes, these people, the, the trend has been, <laughs> been these ETs, these beings, these higher dimensional beings coming in. And, um, you know, there's a, lo there's a lot of programmed fear around these ETs and contacting them and getting messages from them. But if you look beyond the fear and you find out what's actually going on, you realize that it's here, this information is coming to benefit the earth for, for, the, for the most part. Granted, there are negative ET races, but that's not who's coming through these sessions at all. And the reason I know that is always this information is couched hugely with relief for that person, with guidance for that person, with um, healing for that person. So ne never without that. These sessions are never without that. And so that's how we can kind of pinpoint, okay, this is, this is beautiful. This is lovely. And this is something worth paying attention to. Do most of your clients feel that they are experiencers of some kind or what's kind of the percentage of that? Or are they just people coming for sessions and they're surprised by this information? You know, I've had, I've had the whole, the whole spectrum. I've had people who are very, very um, aware that they've been contacted throughout their lives. And then others who are like, I keep getting these strange images uh, they seem really weird. I keep getting them. And then, and then we'll find out during these, during the session that these images are actually, so this would be an artist and these images are actually coming through from their higher dimensional, you know, ET self that's saying, Hey, you need to draw out these images, paint them and bring them to earth because they are going to activate something in each human who sees it. And it will actually help them expand and change their frequency. And so, so it's all across the board. So some people know, some people don't, it's a total surprise to them, but they're getting information and they just don't know why and what to do with it a lot of the time. Some of these images, I've, I've had them happen in my session before, and don't some of them remind you of crop circle images? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. These weird geometric, beautiful images that are almost like mandalas that are meant to, to activate something. We got a lot of neighborhood noise over here. <laughs> don't mind us, we got chickens over here. We have, you know, whatever. <laughs> I love it. You know what? Real life, lady, real life is happening around us all the time. We, we manage to do this work with kids, grandkids, and all kinds of other things going on, right? Dogs. Yep. We got dogs, kids, neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, you know, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is, is your move into doing these sessions kind of online. You, you, practiced much like I did, which was you did a great bulk in, in physical one-on-one -on -one live sessions before ever moving into yeah. doing them using technology like that. And, you know, it was an interesting step for me to move into that. But when I did, at, at very, very quickly, I realized some of the great benefits and also how some of the things are exactly the same. And uh, I'd love to hear you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I absolutely love the freedom that that these sessions provide. You know, we're not anchored to my home, to my couch, to my surroundings. Um, it opens it up so people can be comfortable in their own environment. They can be comfortable on their own pillows. You know, we're talking. We have freedom of movement, you know, while we're talking, before the hypnosis ever starts. And, and a lot of people need that because there's a lot of high energy and anxiety prior to these sessions, you know, that people bring in because they're like, is it going to work? What am I going to find out? You know, I got, I got all these issues or maybe. And, um, and so it really helps dissipate those kind of energies prior to the session, you know, just kind of talking on the phone. That's, that's what I do for a couple hours with each client before. And we're just talking on the phone, t hearing about their life story and the, the ability to walk and talk and, and just kind of move your body has been, has been a game changer. And then, you know, the technique also, um, because it's not QHHT, it doesn't have a kind of more, uh, doesn't have the more rigid structure um, of QHHT. So we're not always going to a past, you know, even in QHHT, we didn't always go to the past, but you know, 
that's kind of the guidelines. You kind of go through a past life. But this has been really, really, I think it has allowed for these um, other selves to come into these sessions because we're not, you know, being forcing the flow of this energy into something. And still the higher self comes in the, the vast majority of the time, even after this ET higher selves come in. Um, but I, I love the flow of these sessions. I love the, the ability to, to reach people who need it all over the world, people who can't get to Portland, people who can't get to my house, even if they are in Portland, you know, there's mobility issues, there's all sorts of stuff. And so I absolutely adore being able to do these sessions. And um, it's been a game changer. It has been a game changer. Now coming in the fall, I'll be doing more of a mix of in-person and, and, and not. And, um, you know, it is, it, sometimes it is fun to like, just meet a person face to face, give them a hug and enjoy each other's energy. But then other times it's like, man, I really don't want to clean my house. <laughs> Freedom, a little bit of a freedom. I'm you know, one, of the, one of the things that I I found, and I wasn't quite, you know, I, I didn't see this coming till I, I did sessions this way for a while. There are some people who have that performance anxiety anyway, but if they're at least in their own home, yeah, some of that is they don't feel like they got all dressed up. They made all that trip. Some people then, you know, don't have to fly or rent a car or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of that build up to get to the session. And then, then they are and they're like, okay, this is it. It bet, you know, it's gotta be it. It's gotta be now. And, they, and there's, uh, there's a lot of pressure. And when you do a session on your own sofa, yeah. some of that pressure isn't there and that was wonderful to discover with bqh yeah and I, I i think that pressure yeah and you really hit on it just the reduction in cost and reduction in time you know is huge the, the cost is amazing like one time i had these clients who it was a couple and they spent a couple thousand dollars on a trip to get to Portland and have these back to pack sessions. And that's not how much I charge by any means. That's those were travel fees and hotel and everything. And I was honored and humbled that they would even do that, but I don't want them to have to, you know, good Lord, that's expensive. And you should go, to, <laughs> you should go somewhere else. But, but, uh, but, you know, taking, taking that out of the equation opens it up to so many more people and, and I, I just, I, I love that. The accessibility, the accessibility and the reduction in, in time. And I think people are, people need that. People need that right now. Yeah. They're busy, you know, they can't spend a whole day traveling or a whole weekend traveling. Yeah. So I'm a fan. <laughs> and you do. Yeah. You know, um, I, I had to put all of my July and August sessions, uh, you know, I, I had to tell everybody, I've got to, I got to get back to you. <laughs> yeah. I've got this big list of people I'm going to contact once my uh, grandbaby is born and I'm back home. But I, the very last session that I did before coming out here, Allison, it was the craziest thing. And the, the wonderful thing about it was it was a fellow practitioner and, and we are still talking right now. And she's very open actually to talk about sharing pieces of the video. And, and the reason that I would want to share pieces of the video is this, you know, every session, as you know, is so different and so unique, but this one was crazy, crazy mm -hmm. as far as her body movements during the healing. Now we've seen lots of things, right? You see lots of shaking, you see limbs going up, you see yeah. all this kind of stuff. Well, she had this really interesting thing go on with her during the healing. It was um, this rocking motion thing and it was different parts of her body. She said, and, and she said, I'm just laying here. Said, I'm just laying here like a noodle. And then, like her arm, it was like somebody like Ooh. this and I'm looking and you can like see, you can see like, she's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And, and then Allison, guess where else it happened? Oh, in her jaw, she's talking. Yeah. And, and they were adjusting stuff. And, and at first it was, I wasn't getting a lot of feedback about what was happening, but then finally the healing teams, they were like, well, you won't really understand what's going on here. And I'm, I basically am like, try me. Yeah. 
you talk to us about this anyway. We'll focus more on that, you know, and uh, when we release a little bit of that video. But the point I want to make is, you know, this person was in California and I was in Kansas. And yeah. It was just stunning. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. That would be brilliant to witness. I, I definitely haven't had anything where I was like, oh my God, look what their body is doing. But I have had really, really weird stuff happen in these sessions. Like one lady was like, beautiful, wonderful lady was like, did you notice in my session how somebody came in and out of the room? And I'm like, no, <laughs> that didn't happen. And she's like, yeah, someone came in and out of the room and like opened up a closet. And I'm like, no, they didn't. I was watching you, which I could see her closet right behind. I was watching you the whole time because that's, that's my job. You know, I'm watching the whole time that this hypnosis is going on. And she's like, I could have sworn during the session, I heard somebody come into my room and open up the closet. I'm like, they didn't. They, like, they didn't on, on this plane. They did not do that. And we re-listened to the session. No, we can't, can't find it anywhere. I, I actually was re-listening to that session today because I'm going to be using some of that material, hopefully, for this um, upcoming presentation. But it was like, there, there's nobody opening a closet or anything. There's no footsteps, nothing. And then this other time, a, a client who was in Colorado, and I'm in Oregon, she, um, we're going through her session, and all of a sudden, the screen goes black which is fine because I always have a backup. I do a backup recording on, um, I don't record the video. I record the phone. So we do, we do the session through a conference call, certain, um, software. And so if the internet goes down, I I'm on the, I'm, I can hear them the whole time, but we, we like the internet for the video part. So I can see them the whole time. All of a sudden the screen goes black and I hear this. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, what's going on there? And she had right at this one part where we're talking about um, her house and some entities that were at her house that could be at her house. She's like, I just felt this jolt douche, like this. And, uh, and it jolted her awake and it, my screen went black. I'm like what the hell? But luckily we were still on the phone. We could hear each other. And I was like able to talk her up and everything. And it was so crazy, so crazy. And I've had stuff like that happen in my house too, where it's just all of a sudden someone jolts, like there's an energy, like a surge, an energy surge that goes through them and boom, out of the, out of the session. It's so, it, it like gets your heart racing on both parts where you're like, oh, what just happened? You know, because <laughs> you're so in this chill mode, you know? And all of a sudden the search. So yeah, it, there is crazy stuff that happens and I love it. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to give anybody the idea that I bat a hundred. I do not. There are times when a session just, maybe it's just the interview that happens. And when we try the session, you know, no go, they can't even, they can't see anything and that's okay. What I tell them in that case is, you know, let's practice. Practice makes perfect. So let's practice exercising those hypno muscles. You know, there's tons of YouTube hypnosis that you can do without paying a cost. And then when you're ready, come back and we'll, we'll start where we left off. No worries. Yeah. And so it's everybody's learning how to do this. You know, we're all just, we're all just practicing. We're all having fun. We're all enjoying the, whatever, whatever cool thing that comes out of these sessions. I love it. You know, a couple of places in some of the training videos in the BQH sessions, when I have seen things and I was like, because I don't normally video record um, live sessions at all. And when I have seen energetically things happen, I've always wondered with, with those things mm. you know, or not. And so some of those questions are now being answered for me a little bit because of doing sessions like this and, re, uh, you know, using Zoom or video conferencing and then doing the training videos. And what I have found is it's both things, meaning um, there are times when I've, I've gone, oh, wow, did, I just saw sparkles and I knew there was the like <laughs> the, the video going and I said, I know exactly when, I mean, I was saying that to myself inside and I remembered when that was. And then I, after it was over, even in the training video, I said, I saw sparkles. 
I wonder if that's going to pick it up. And I went back and I looked and, and it wasn't, it was not on the video. So we, that is real third eye kind of stuff that, you know, isn't picked up by a camera. But then again, the, the opposite is also true. So now that we have had so many people go through the BQH class, I'm getting people sending me even clips going, rewatch this part of your video right here. I slowed it down and look at what's going on there. And I'm like, whoa. And I didn't even know anything was going on. And some of um, the last one that was told was when I was talking about exactly this, doing this work uh, remotely, doing this work on the internet. And I was talking about the one time that is still stands out so significant in my mind because we were having a windstorm in Kansas, crazy mm. storm, crazy, crazy windstorm where all my Tibetan flags were being blown up and ripped. And it was that crazy kind of wind. And then the gal was in Utah. And then during the healing, I looked up and noticed that the flags just started not, you know, smacking against the window. And then finally they were hanging still, but I could see past my uh, porch into the pasture and the trees were still doing this. Oh. And I'm like, whoa, but you know that feeling, you know, when the, when the SC, when the, the healing is going through, you know, that feeling, right? And that was going on and she was feeling it and I'm watching her on the video and I'm feeling it in my house. And then I'm looking at those flags and they're hanging just like this. And it was like, whoa. And part of me, you know, part of me like wanted to pick up my phone and videotape that, but no, because we're practitioners first, right? We're taking care of our client. Yeah. But I'm still going, wow. And I'm, you know, I'm like, wow, wow. Of course, nobody's there to see any of it. But, yeah. um, but here's the interesting part. While I'm telling that story in the class, things happen in the video behind me. Oh, wow. And that's what somebody has, has noticed and then slowed down and, and said, look exactly when you're talking about the flags and people are talking about it. So in that- oh, I'm, I'm totally intrigued now. Yeah, all I'm doing is remembering magic and it shows up on the camera. How crazy is yeah. that? Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> I, I'm always impressed with this life and, and the cool stuff that comes through. I, I'm endlessly, you know, and you have, it's all about paying attention to this moment right now. You, you miss it all if you're distracted or you're numbed or you're dumbed or you're doing, you know, you're off in a totally different world. It's like, if you're here now, the weird stuff that shows up is endlessly entertaining I will tell you endlessly entertaining oh my gosh <laughs> I miss so much you know in my early 20s I'm sure <laughs> but yeah I definitely I miss some I'm sure I missed a lot of magic going on around me in my early 20s my god oh my god you know I'm older than you are but just for a moment there I was I was kind of daydreaming about hobnobbing around with you both of us in our 20s I bet we would yeah. have gotten into a lot of trouble so much trouble <laughs> <laughs> so much trouble I remember one night my husband pissed me off I'm sure he wasn't my husband yet and I was like this mother trucker if I knew where his car was right now I would key it <laughs> remember like being crazy like that like I was god a mess and thank god I never found it <laughs> um, yeah. so let's yeah. talk about that now moment a little bit you know one of the things that that we're talking about over in our um, community support forum for quantum healers is we're talking about some people who go into BQH or QHHT or other sessions and um with expectations of having either a cosmic adventure or seeing a thrilling past life or whatever. And sometimes they're brought into um, ways of experiencing or being led to experience just that now moment where, you know, their teams or whatever don't give them uh, these storylines or these things to focus on because they want them to focus on the now. Do you have some sessions like that? Well, sorry, I was interrupted. Come here. If you're going to interrupt, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> so I was interrupting right in the middle of that, can asking make, about a sandwich. Can I make myself my own peanut butter? You can wait a little bit, okay? But okay. <laughs> so what the matine? Go get something. Go get some some something small. She knows this is an interview going on. <laughs> She's so. Yo, it's good. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I think that expectations, you know, wanting to propel yourself somewhere on this voyage. Yeah. I think a lot of people have that, have that desire. And then the higher self though, they, they have their own, they have their own agenda basically. And sometimes it is just to bring you right back here and say, no, you're not focusing on this. This is where the real stuff is happening. You need to be here now. You need to take care of this, 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 and we're not going to give you all of this grand adventure until you do that. I've had, I've had so many sessions like that where they get, maybe get glimpses or something that something is happening, but it's so much more important for them to be rooted here right now and have all the, have knowledge about all the things that they're supposed to be doing right here, right now, whether it's, <laughs> well, listen if you have to right now take care of something you you can do that <laughs> you know i think it will be interesting what she comes up with on her own over here she's got some shredded mozzarella a, a step ladder out <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> uh -huh. oh. she's listening and just not obeying <laughs> Okay. Just at least keep it down, please. Mm -hmm. That's better. They that know, don't they? Point. Even the two-year-old and four-year-old here know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one knows. She just, her, she's letting her. Remember what we were talking about, about like the body and the ego? <laughs> this one knows, but her ego is telling her she needs some food right now. Well, maybe it's her body. Who knows? We'll have that conversation later. Yeah. Here's some other kind of sessions that I know that, that, are, that are happening a little bit where we're learning. Um, sometimes people come to the sessions because they really want to have a conversation with their higher self. They just really want to talk to their higher self and they still have this, this expectation that their higher self is something so completely different and so completely separate from themselves. And more and more over all of these years of doing this work, what I'm finding is that's one of the reasons we're here, you know, on the planet is to bring our higher selves and our conscious mind together. And, and so a lot of people are really actively creating that merge, you know, between their conscious mind and their higher self. But then sometimes then when they have sessions like this, it, it provides some, I don't know, confusion or some, at least some questions anyway. Do you have some sessions like that too? You know, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head with, you know, this is the evolution of the human being here on earth right now is integrating all these other parts of yourself, including the higher self, being able to access that knowledge right here, right now. And, you know, if you're constantly projecting that this entity is separate from you, then you're, you're kind of missing the point. And um, I think, uh, <laughs> I think it, you know, when, when people have a session, they're, they're, if they allow themselves, they'll be really clued in to how quantum they really are, that you can have this egoic part of you, you can have the observer part of you, and then you can have this higher self part of you come in and give information that both of these other parts of you may disagree with. <laughs> but they know, but the higher self knows what you signed up for you know they know your path they know where you've been they know why you're doing stuff they know why you're getting these signs or these aches and pains and the ego might think it's something totally different and so yeah there's kind of a battle going on but when you start accepting that that is a that part of you is going to start being stronger and stronger and stronger and you start listening to their advice your whole life changes your whole life changes in a moment, in an afternoon, in an afternoon, I see whole lives change, and I know you do too, and it's, it's so brilliant, it's so beautiful, and then when you start going along with that, and start integrating that higher self knowledge into your life, and start having those regular communications with your higher self, it's, it reaches everybody, because it affects everybody, 
And that is how we raise the vibration of this earth, by raising our own vibration, by constantly pulling into us this higher vibration self. And I, I love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and that really shows how multidimensional we are. You know, our ego aspect, our ego aspect, our temporal aspect, our past life aspect, our higher self aspect, all of that. And actually, that brings me to a project you're working on, right? You're, you're getting yeah. ready to give a presentation on this. Yeah, well, I was, uh, I was telling you earlier how sometimes I get my, like, I get these downloads usually like right when I'm just getting into the shower or when I'm in, you know, like when I'm just about to step into the shower, I'm like, oh, and or in the shower. And one of them was, you have to write this book. And that's, I can tell that's not me because I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to write a book. That's my ego. I'm like, no, yes, I don't want to write a book. But no, this was, this was like, it's clear as day. You have to write a book and here's what it's called. And I won't, I won't give the title right now because what if I change it? But they're like, basically the idea is that we are at the dawn of becoming this whole being. That, that's, that's where we're stepping, this whole human. And what we thought was a whole human encased in this body is not, not true. Where we're stepping, where we're evolving to is a whole human that has all these other spokes, like, a, like all these other fractals of parallel lives and in other dimensions and actually learning about them and becoming whole with them and accepting of them and getting and having conversations with them, including your higher self. That's where we're going. That's how we actually bring in this, this higher dimensional information and change this earth because, because this earth is like a key on the piano of the universe, the universe being the piano and the earth is just one key on it. And all these other planets are in tune, but that one damn key is so out of tune. It, it hurts. It hurts everybody to hear it. You know, everybody else in the universe is like, golly, fix yourself. <laughs> you sound terrible. Oh, you know, all these other, all these other <laughs> planets sound incredible. But when we play that one key, that's the earth. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It hurts your ears. It hurts your heart, you know. And, and so this knowledge, bringing this knowledge and in, in integrating who we are into these bodies also allows the earth to, to grow and change and get in tune, get match a frequency that they need us at. And so we're kind of tuning up the earth as this grand instrument so that we, they can start, we can start playing, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, this is my idea. This is what I'm presenting on in Sedona, this conference in September, the Transformational Shift Conference. So I'm getting, I'm re-listening to all of these sessions that I've had, not only this summer, but, but since the beginning of the year, where um, people are visited by these other beings or their higher self comes in and says, there's this other life that exists that they're living right now. And they're getting information, whether they're a scientist, whether they're an inventor, whether they're artists, whether they're musicians, whether they're healers, they're all getting, in, getting information from these other selves and they're tasked with incorporating it and integrating it into those different modalities so that we all benefit from it that that is the theme that's running through these sessions it's brilliant it's beautiful and so many of us when we meet these other selves for the first time we're scared out of our minds because they don't look like us <laughs> who is that who's who is that? Oh, gosh. Who's there? <laughs> Yeah, you're reminding me of this session that I had long, long time ago. I think it, it probably was 2009. I, you know, I hadn't been doing the work very long at all. And this fella came to see me and he was very quiet and he was very, you know, he was very um, emotionally, you could tell, you, you are, you could just tell by looking at him, oh, I know what your childhood was like, right? I mean, just looking at him, you know, it was one of those kinds of, of people who, just was not like just about everybody else there and very tentative and very, you know, like this. And he also had, um, and this, the story ends up being a good one, by the way, everybody, <laughs> before I even finish this story, it was a really great story. Okay. It's a good one. <laughs> but yeah, I know, but he's like, 
and he was very, he seemed uncomfortable in his body. He was a tall guy. And then there was this Allison and I'm swear I'm not making fun of him because you know what? I have my own issues with my own eyes and, and including them going into different directions. But this fella, literally his eyes would track, one would track like this, one would track like that. Mm -hmm. Now I have a lazy eye. So I was very, very uh, sensitive to him having that and knowing that my eye does that a little bit. And even on videos, I'm sure of it <laughs> sometimes. Okay. But, you know, uh, not, not so much like his, but, you know, he wanted to know why he was different and all of that. And he goes back and has uh, <clears throat> uh, into time where he's on this spaceship going around the planet and he is of this kind of insectoid alien race. And he's so intrigued by humans and he's so, so intrigued by humans and he's in contact with his higher self. And he's talk. he was even saying, you know, someday I might like to be a human, but he's so excited about uh, earth and humanity that he doesn't want to get this. He doesn't want to wait to oh. incarnate. He's, he doesn't want to wait to incarnate. <laughs> so this is what, this is what this fella does. He, he gets, he gets, figures out, he makes a plan, he puts his current body into stasis on the ship mm -hmm. in a little tube thing, goes into stasis, his soul energy is placed then, comes down from the planet into a brand new baby bo being born, you know, of course, with, with the parents and the, um, and the physical vehicle agreeing to all of this. And he has a life then of this human child, but he'd never been human before or even bipedal before. He'd never been a mammal before. And some of them, so some of this uh, insectoid part of himself is coming out in his personality. Yeah. And, it, and it's like watching that, it's like, man, this makes so much sense. Yeah, with the eyes moving. Yes, in. yes. And how different he felt from everybody else because, and we've learned this from Dolores Cannon's work, that, that many people, you know, you're human for a while. I know that I've done many human lifetimes, many, 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 right? And so I, you know, I got this thing down, at least as far as, you know, feeling comfortable mostly <laughs> in a human body the, you know, my, my structure, my day-to-day -day life isn't completely, but for this fella, it was, and it showed and shows on his whole life, but he actually then, um, you know, got to know that, that his more comfortable physical self was in stasis circling the planet until he was done with his yep. earthly life. And he just left saying, this just makes so much sense. And then he got to meet that part of his family. And suddenly everything was okay and easier because he understood yeah. his place and why he was here and why yeah. he felt so different. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I, I love that. I love that on so many different points. You know, I love to to get that information out that you just did about the fact that you know sometimes we're <laughs> these these souls are so in a rush to be here now either you know either to witness this great awakening that we're that we're going through right now or to witness the event and energies that we're we're actually going through right now too and it's like they they just <laughs> they're like give me the first ticket but then most of them have never been human before, or if they have, it was set some ancient time on a co totally different planet. And they're just, they're, the rest of them are here. It's like, <laughs> so I've had, I've had clients who are, who they they get back to their home planet in these sessions and they have a completely different body, like stuff we've never seen in a million years as they're explaining it to me. And they're on their home planet and they're like, everybody's gone. I'm like, well, wh where is everybody? Oh, they all went to earth too, actually. They all went to earth and everybody's gone. They're all on earth, which makes sense. We have this huge population boom, you know, we're like seven something billion people on earth and they, they're not all people, you know, these are all these other planets are vacating themselves and they're in state, their bodies are in stasis, their homes are in stasis. Everything is in stasis just so they can be a part of the show, just so they can help just so they can be here and they're not used to it they're not used to it and so so their bodies and their their personalities yeah are more used to 
what it's like on their home planet, where they spend most of their most of their incarnations being, most of their time being. So yeah, it's a bleed through. And then a lot of the clients are like, why? Yeah, why am I like this? Why do I have this desire to go home? Where is home? You know, is it <laughs> is it in Oregon or California? No, it's not, <laughs> it's not. It's on that planet. <laughs> Where there's nobody else there, so don't go home yet. They're all over here. <laughs> it's so fun, man. I, what a what a brilliant story you just said. I want to go home. I want to go home. There's no one here. They're all back here. You just made you just made like a you made like a four panel cartoon thing in my head. I might have. I might <laughs> I might have to draw that one out and uh, and send it to you. So tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in Sedona for those uh, people who are nearby or simply would like to take themselves to Sedona next month. And uh, oh come yeah, oh that would be so fun. It would be so fun to meet more people. Um, you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be speaking at the Transformational Shift Conference. Um, in Sedona, September 28th, 29th, and 30th, I'll actually be speaking on um, Saturday the 29th at around 4 p.m. Uh, I'm super excited. And uh, there's quite a few speakers there, a lot of indigenous speakers there, and it, it's just going to be beautiful. And it's something about, oh, crap, I don't know the title. It's like something about galactic awakening or something is something actually that has to do exactly with what I was talking about. So it was cool that they kind of jive together what, what I want to talk about and, and the messages for this year at this conference, but it, it's put on by Tolek um, who you can find him online and uh, he's done several of these before and I'm super excited to, to speak there. And I have some, some peeps are coming in, like Lauren Hansen is coming in, who I'm, I'm just so excited about. Uh, and I don't know if everybody out there knows how we manifested this, but um, Lauren and I have never met person face to face. And Lauren is a practitioner, a hypnosis practitioner over in South Carolina, I believe. One of the Carolinas. And South Carolina. I'll never get it right. Sorry, Lauren. Um, and we were like, we got to meet. I, I was like, I have to meet you. I have to meet you face to face. I'm feeling the call. And she's like, yeah, we have to meet. And we're trying to figure out where do we meet? Do I come to her? Does she come to me? I'm like, I, I, you know, I, let me travel. I love traveling. And she's like, nothing's, <laughs> don't come here. Let's go somewhere. And we we're like, should we meet in Kansas and go see Candace? And we're like, yeah, but that's Kansas, you know, <laughs> you're there, but it's Kansas. And it's like, true. What, what about that? No, no I, I've never been to Kansas. So I, I can't it's, honestly. I'm it's so not a destination location. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's validated now. <laughs> so basically we were like, we should go to Sedona. Let's go. Let, we both wanted to go there for years. Let's go to Sedona. Let's meet up there. When can we meet? We're talking in the beginning of summer. She's like, I don't think I can meet until late September. Okay. Let's try to meet in late September in Sedona nothing else was said nothing else nothing was looked up no prices for airfare nothing absolutely nothing within a week i had um an invitation to sedona and and an air flight and and uh this this conference came up i i was like well shoot and i reached out to lauren i was like we just manifested the crap out of a visit to sedona so so we're both meeting in sedona and then other people are coming um, I'm super excited about it. And anybody else who wants to come, please, I would love to meet you there. Please come and say hi. I, I'm exactly like this in person, you know. You know, this is, this is me. So, you know, let's have a drink. I'm not supposed to drink too much, but I can have a couple of beers. <laughs> not that they serve them at the conference. I don't know. There you go. Oh, so that's the conference. I wish I could be there. I've been gone so much this year. It's crazy. I, you know, I, I'm, I know Kansas is not a destination location, but I'm kind of homesick. Um, yeah. It's beautiful here on the coast and I adore being with my grandchildren, but oh my gosh, I miss my ponies. I miss my own bed. I, I, I'm looking forward to going home, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kansas. No, no, not a desk. It's, it's a drive through state. Okay. <laughs> Very happy to live there. But yeah, it's one of the reasons one of the reasons I have so much elbow room is because yeah, you know, uh, people are on their way to the coast to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Now, wait, I want to know though more about this, um, the conference. For those of us who won't be able to to join, is it being recorded? Can we can we catch up with it later? I believe it is. I'm. I don't know. I need to reach out to him. I'll ask him about that, and I'll get back to you. I'm hoping. I'm if if it's not, I'm going to have my presentation recorded. That's a promise. Somehow, I don't know who's going to record it, but it's going to be yeah. recorded. And I, um, you know, I get these visions, uh, like not here. It's more of a knowing. I get these visions, and it's like I know that whatever I speak about, that all of this stuff I'm kind of gathering for this conference. This is going to be a thing for me. I'm going from. I'm going. I'm going to be doing conferences. I just know it. It's a. It's a sure thing. Yeah. <laughs> like I already see myself in Europe next year. I'm like, yep, I'm going to Europe in 2019. It's happening. I'm uh, speaking over there. I'm almost certain I'm going to be there as well. So before you book anything, let's uh, compare notes so uh, so I can hug your neck at some point. Absolutely. Uh, across the Absolutely. pond. Across. Yeah. The pond. And uh, so yeah, it it'll be recorded and um, some some way somehow, and I'll I'll upload it um, to my channel for sure. Um, it may take you know five hundred years to upload, but I'm gonna get it up there. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, it, this is it. This summer has been amazing. I started doing this Patreon thing um, because I felt like I wanted more interactions with with people, and I. I did this thing where I took off my comments from my videos, um, or at least the most recent ones, because I, I, I felt like they were just, um, they were affecting my ego, you know, either, either this way or that, you know, it's like it, the rude ones were affecting my ego one way and the positive ones were affecting my ego the other way. And I was like, I just don't, I don't want to, I don't want to ha get feedback that way. I just don't. I want to be out of that loop and I appreciate everybody who does comment. It's very nice, but I don't I don't I don't think it's good for me to be kind of in that loop. And so I I took them off and um but I still want to interact with people. So I created Patreon where where my patrons um can actually ask me questions because what I found out is like a lot of the a lot of people will ask me maybe the same question. So maybe 30 people are asking me this question and another 30 are asking me this totally other question. So if I start doing videos where I'm just answering these questions and I'm addressing them, it'll, it'll trickle down. And so many people will be benefited by that. So I'm enjoying that right now and um, enjoying gathering the material for, for this upcoming event, enjoying, uh, no, this upcoming conference. <laughs> I want to make sure I use the right word. And um, I'm enjoying the, um, you know, doing the BQH um, that, that you guys teach. And I, I just, I, I, I'm enjoying pretty much everything right now. I, I, enjoying the summer, <laughs> enjoying my interactions with people. And, you know, you were, you were so nice because you put up this um, code, this discount code. So, and I haven't really, I haven't advertised this because um, I, haven't, I haven't done a video since it happened, so I haven't put it out there, but Candace created this discount code for me to use um, or to offer, offer people. It's Allison Co. 10, and anybody who signs up for BQH and just writes Allison Co. 10, um, the one zero instead of spelled out, um, they will get a 10% discount off of BQH. And it's just, it, it's super nice. It's just a, a really cool thing to do. Thank you for doing that. That was very generous. Very well, generous. It's so much fun. You know, it's so much fun to connect with people in this way and to support practitioners all over the world. Um, you know, and other practitioners um, also can you know, and take um, advantage of this this program. But but those of you out there who love and adore Allison and who find out about BQH can absolutely use that code if they're interested. Um, in doing this work too. And you know, a lot of people, a lot of the, the questions I get is, can I really do this? Can yeah. I really do this? And, and you know, what do I need to have this background or do I need to have that background or do I need to know this or do I need to know that? And I always say the only thing you need is the desire to do this work. That's the yeah. only thing. And it's the most important thing. And after that, BQH will take care of you because we take it from the ground up. Very, very yeah. basic stuff. We take you through the most basic of things to get you to understand um, how to do this kind of work where we 
help others explore parts of themselves and go, uh, you know, go out into the cosmos or deep within somebody's self. I mean, there's so many, and even yeah. play, even times where it doesn't even seem like there's a, a big storyline where, where they're, where they're floating in the cosmos or in the love of source or whatever. And you're surrounding yourself with that. You know, some of those sessions are so amazing and so healing and so peaceful when, when there's such a yearning for peace or, or rejuvenation, you know, that's yeah. exactly what that is. And you as a practitioner, you kind of kind of benefit from that. It's kind of like being in a wake, you know, of, of yeah. a, that energy, and you get to you get to see all of that, and it's it's yeah. amazing work. It's like an energy bath for the practitioner. Yeah, you're like, woo, this feels good. <laughs> well, you know, you 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 said you're enjoying yourself. You know, Allison, it really shows. You just oh, thank you. You're, you're so glowing. It you're like you're having so much fun. And you know, we've been doing this for about an hour now, so. Um, you know, maybe we we're about at, at the end of our time. You need to go see what a lunch uh, uh, your girl is there. <laughs> I can see the mess right over here. But, but I want to uh, thank I, you so much. And how do people find out about your Patreon? Um, how do they? Oh, find uh, hey, good question. Um, I'm going to put that. I'll just. I should probably do a video, but it's basically, they can just look up on, on Patreon, go to the app or go to the website and type in Allison Co. That's it. And they'll find a link to that. I'll also put it under, I'm, I'll put a link under all my videos on YouTube. I actually, on my website, I have a become a patron button. Okay. Um, so you can, you can go there. Um, so there, there's, there's a couple different avenues, but yeah, it's just under my name. And, um, it's fairly new. I only have a couple of videos up there. I just started it a couple of weeks ago and I was, um, committed to doing bi-monthly videos. So two, two videos a month where I just answer these questions for people. And, but I'm hoping to do a live format with, with, with people so we can, so I'm not just asking, answering their first question. It's, does my answer lead to another question un under that umbrella? That's what I want to get to. It's just keep, keep digging, keep revealing, keep getting more and more answers having to do with certain topics so that people aren't left having more and more questions. You know, the answer doesn't bring up more questions. So that, that's my desire, but I'm, I'm setting that all up now. Um, I do want to say really quick, because I know people are interested in like the event and new earth and stuff. And uh, I do want to say when I was listening to these sessions, um, there was some really cool information that came out in these sessions that were one week apart. And um, one, of, one of the sessions was saying, you know, this energy, so, so this event energy is like, it traveled through, through a portal from the, from the central sun and it's actually in our sun right now. And what's going to happen, and she used this, she used this image, she said, it's as if as if it caught, you know, just as if the copier machine, how it goes over a page, like the light goes over. And she said, that's how this energy is going to hit the earth. And anything that doesn't match this high vibration energy from this event will be, will be either, you know, kept at this lower 3D version of the earth or transported to other areas. And I, I just love that image of the copier going and the other the other client was like yeah this surge <laughs> he kept calling it a surge going through going going from the sun and and it had traveled to the sun going from the sun and hitting the earth like a surge of light and so it was really cool getting those kind of images just beautiful and they're always like you know you <laughs> you, you know i I don't really deal with timelines because <laughs> I can handle them, but not everybody can. Cause I'm like, anytime I hear a timeline, I'm like, ah, that'd be cool, but I'm not putting any, like any, you know, weight on it anyway. So that's, that's my take on timelines. I'm like, sure. Give them to me, but I don't put any weight on them, but apparently other people do. <laughs> I found out. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're always like the reason the reason why you, nobody can predict this stuff is because of course it's based on humanity's consciousness and it would it would not be a benefit if enough people weren't ready to match this energy it wouldn't be a benefit to the earth if it came by and hit us right now and so they're just it's it's waiting 
It's waiting for us to raise our vibration and match this energy. And as we raise our vibration, we raise the earth's vibration. And when the earth's vibration and the sun's vibration, you know, that, that, that energy that's connecting to the sun, when those match, that's when it happens. And so it's incumbent upon us to keep ourselves at this very high vibration, to clean ourselves out, to start bringing in the energy that's being, that's being given to us, to, to keep meditating, to constantly stay in that high vibration, keep clean, keep our, keep our vibration high. So please, everybody, you are part of the solution. You are absolutely a part of the solution. We're completely dependent upon you. And it happens in a moment. It happens at the present moment. That is when you keep your vibration high. It's always in the present moment, always an adjustment in the present moment. Am I doing what I can do to be here now and be of a highest vibration? I'll tell you, that is where it exists. That's where all change exists. And it starts with you. It's always an inside job. You are key to this. So that is my message for today. Thank you so much for having me on. I love this stuff. And uh, yeah. <laughs> It's so great. I, I love having me some Allison Co. energy. It just, <laughs> I feel like I've been to a party. And as you were talking, I, I was thinking, you know, all the way back to what you started to talk about at first um, with the piano key. So when, so when the, the sun and the earth and the energy is all, it's like that, that string on the piano will be tuned and we yeah. will be able to join the symphony that is yes. the, the music of the, the, the spheres, right? The music of the cosmos. That's exactly right. And everybody, that's why all eyes are on us because we're noisy and we're <laughs> we sound like crap. So everybody's here. Everybody came here to, to help tune it. Yes. So, so you are so important. Every single person is so important to tuning it in. And, and I just, I, I'm so, I'm always so humbled by that, how important each and every person is in this process. There is nobody that's more important than anybody else. Absolutely not. So, so please, we're all dependent upon working together in our own unique way to right. raise our own vibration, raise the vibration of the earth and get it ready for that great tuning. And to be authentic, I want to put that word in there too, because just because somebody else is doing something over here, if it's not if it's not your high vibration, if it's not authentic to you, if it's not your reason for being on the planet, it, it doesn't have anything to do with you. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, be be authentic in your own self. Well, authenticity is is you having been tuned to your highest vibration. Oh. Now that's so, a quote. So, I'm writing it down. Yes. So authenticity is key. To you, that is you having tuned your own instrument. When you're showing up as your natural self in all environments and around all relationships, that is you having tuned your own instrument. Okay? So you tuning in your own instrument is, is, the, is the key to all of this happening. Ma micro, macro. So yeah. yes, authenticity is the sign. That is the canary in the coal mine. You know, if someone's being inauthentic, they're not in tune. And so, so that's why it, it's, um, people love that. People love being around authentic people because it helps tune them to, what, to that vibration. And so, yes, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Super, super. Well, thanks again, Allison, for taking time out of your summer day here Yay. with me and all our friends on Facebook. Uh, we had lots and lots, 136 people commenting and somebody <laughs> gave your Patreon link in the conversation and uh so thank you for that and uh, we'll put more links underneath this video i want to take uh, a moment though just to thank greg prescott of in5d.com who uh so generously supports the quantum healing with candace show thank you so much again and uh take good care and uh see you on the forum okay good luck to you and your family thank you and thanks greg we love this. I love this show. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>